Oh, I would like to uh, hand over to James Robinson, who's uh, from Computing at Schools. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Um, so, my is James. I'm uh, a CAS master teacher um, and uh, work with the Computing at School organisation. I'm assuming most people in the room have probably heard of Computing at School. Is there anyone hasn't heard of Computing at School? I'm going to very quickly just whiz through uh, exactly what it is they do. Um, I am on Twitter, but I very rarely tweet at the moment. I'm sort of still getting into it, but if you want to have a look there, then you can see what I'm doing. Um, so, very quickly, what I'd like to do today is just talk a bit about um, who CAS are, um, spend a bit of time looking at what they do and how they can support teachers in the classrooms. And I also um, wanted to do a little bit and just tell you a little bit about uh, what I've been doing with Raspberry Pi in the classroom. And it's not particularly exciting, but there's just a couple of ideas there, a couple of, th you know, a couple of things. So, um, Computing at School. Well, it's, it's an organisation driven by its members. Um, their, 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 their sort of goals include promoting computer science within schools, um, supporting teachers through CPD and training, and also acting as the subject, subject, subject association for computing. So that means that they, they're involved in publishing uh, details of how to assess. Uh, they were very heavily involved in consulting on new national curriculum, as was pointed out in an earlier presentation. <clears throat> um, if you're looking to get involved in CAS, the first place I'd recommend you look is the Computing at School website, and the website address is up on the board there. And it is a really uh, fantastic resource for those that are looking for lesson ideas, for resources, for all kinds of things. Um, this is the main, the main website here, the main homepage. Within that we've got whole reams of resources listed, and they're organised by primary or secondary listed by the type of language you're using, the type of, the kind of uh, idea you're trying to get across. So there's a huge bank of resources available on that. And they're all available for reviewing and commenting and improving and all those kind of things. So there's lots of stuff up there to have a look at. And it's not, that's just not just open to teachers, that's open to anybody with an interest in computing in education. Um, it's also got the events section, so you can see we've got the uh, Raspberry Jam was listed on the uh, CAS website. Um, and there's a few other events listed on, on there, and that's where you'll find details of CPD that are being run by CAS. And as you can see, I've got a, a course down here, but I'll come back <coughs> in just a moment. Um, and there's also lots of active discussion on, on the CAS site, anything from particular concepts and how we deliver them, to wider topics about, um, I don't know, how we use Raspberry Pi in classrooms, how we um, engage children, all kinds of things are discussed uh, sometimes quite lively debates on that. <coughs> so, um, in the Cambridge area, we have um, two hubs. Most of what the uh, most of what the CAS group do, the core of their work is, is through their, their hub meetings. So, a hub meeting will meet, meet normally sort of terminally, and in Cambridge, we have two groups. We have a, a secondary group, which I'm leading at the moment, or trying to. Um, and um, we, we currently, we've, we've just had our, our, our 11s at our school have just left, so I'm in the process of putting together an agenda for the next uh, CAS hub in Cambridge, and the, the dates have been confirmed, but it will be in Cambridge and it will be uh, in the second half of the summer term. We also have, very excitingly, this week we have the uh, primary group. We've recognised that the, the needs of secondary teachers, teachers and primary teachers are quite different. And so there was a primary group meeting this week led by uh, Peter Gaynor, who's just walked in. Um, and their meeting for the first time this week on the 15th, uh, hosted at the Cambridge Computing Museum, which if you haven't been, is a fantastic place to go and visit. They've got lots of resources there. It's a really great place to take kids as well. So that, that's happening on the 15th. And Pete, do they just sign up via Eventbrite for that or via the... I think for the, because this is the first one, you just come along really. And uh, I think it was it four till six. Yeah, yeah, four till six, which I haven't put on there. Um, so yeah, if you're, in, if you're in the primary sector, that's a great place to get together. Uh, and usually a hub meeting. There's usually a bit of CPD. There might be some discussion. There might be some activities. But primarily, it's a really, primarily it's a really great chance to get together, to network, to share ideas. And for me, moving from uh, when I moved up here from Hertfordshire. Um, Getting involved in my local hub was one of the ways in which I, I felt that I was sort of really connecting with the local teachers and, and, and sort of um, establishing myself and, and finding out what everyone else was doing in the local area. So, really great place to go and get involved with. Um, CAS also recently um, set up the uh, Master Teacher Programme through its Network of Excellence. 
Now in the Cambridge area, we have four master teachers, um, myself and Pete. We also have Dan, Dan Mayton, who's based up in Cotman, and we have Anthea, who's over in Saffron Walden. And the, the, the task which has been set for four of us in the Cambridge area is to try and deliver um, accessible, teacher-led CPD for teachers um, at, at low cost. Okay? Usually these courses have some kind of charge because uh, refreshments and those kind of things being paid for it might be cover costs, but they're, they're, they're not for profit, so they're, they're run at the lowest cost possible. And over the last year we've, we've run a few different sessions in the area and we'd be really interested to hear from you, anyone that's, that's in the Cambridge area that wants some CPD, that has any particular ideas about CPD needs, please do get in touch with your master teacher team so that we can, we can try and cater courses for what, for what you need. Um, just a, a couple of courses that we have on offer at the moment, or, or sort of events. So I've mentioned the, uh, the, the primary hub meeting. We've then got Dan Layton is, is running a course over in uh, Cottenham going from, let me move that mouse there, that's from uh, June the 3rd to June the 17th. It's a three week course looking at using SonicPi in the classroom. Um, we then have over in Soham, which is where I'm based, uh, we have a developing mobile app course. So we're gonna be looking on that course at how we can use um, App Inventor to create mobile apps and how we can use that uh, with pupils at Key Stage 3, engage them and, uh, and develop their understanding of programming. And we're also, this one's not quite live yet, because I'm just waiting to confirm some details, but we're also going to be using a Raspberry Pi um, package called uh, Google Coder, which has anyone seen Google Coder or play around with that? Yeah? Um, it's a lovely little uh, package which, which you can install on the Raspberry Pi, and it's great for teaching kids looking at um, HTML, CSS. It's not the only way of doing that, by, by any stretch, but it's a, it's a nice little way you can also introduce the basics of networking, you can make it act as a web server, it's a nice little device uh, or platform which you can use for that purpose. And so we'll be running a two hour session on June the 25th. And uh, Peter, due to some technical difficulties, there was another one that you had in, I haven't added on to here, what was that one? What, what it's the 10th of June and it's going to be at um, Sawston Village College, it's an all day um, course uh, for primary school teachers about adapting your primary curriculum. It's a lot of hands-on stuff and um, it sh shows you how to get progression throughout the curriculum in the primary stage. Cool, so there's, there's, there's lots of things going on in the area but we don't want to stop there. One of the things that I wanted to do and started with the Google Code one here is um, is to try and look at providing CPD around how we can use the Raspberry Pi. So like some of the workshop sessions we've seen here, maybe taking days, taking more time over them, um, sitting down, working with them together, spending two or three hours looking at how we deliver one of those kind of things in, in classrooms. And if, those, if those kind of things would appeal, then, then please do get in touch and we'll, we'll try and lay some of those kind of things on. Um, also, the National Conference, now hopefully, this is the updated, oh, it's good, yes. So, uh, the National Conference and uh, CPD sessions this year. Has anyone been to the National Conference previously, the Canada's National Conference? So, a few people have in the room, yeah. Um, this was my first experience of CANS, and I, I still remember one of my early ones listening to Alan enthuse and inspire and be very, very dynamic and still moaning about time as well during his presentation. Um, but the, uh, the, 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 the National Conference is a fantastic experience. There's you know, two or three hundred people in a room just you know, talking about computer science and how we deliver it in school, going off and doing you know, a vast array of workshops. Fantastic experience. Um, now, this year it's slightly different. So what we've got this year, instead of having one day of national conference, the, uh, on the Friday, the 20th of June, in Birmingham, there's going to be a uh, secondary computing training day. And on that day, you can choose between uh, a, whole, uh, so a, a workshop on programming with Python or on hardware and processing concepts. On the same day, in the same location, there's a primary computing day. And this one was a bit more, I think you can choose two of those four, two of them are morning sessions, two of them are afternoon sessions. Um, but you can go along to that. And it's, it's run by CAS members, teachers who are out there doing these things in their classrooms. And the following day is the conference for teachers. So the Saturday, we have the conference for teachers and that will have a usual mix of workshops and activities and discussions and, and all kinds of things going on. So uh, I can highly recommend those, they are absolutely fantastic. You come away from those, those days with such a buzz um, 
unfortunately you get back into school and sometimes that buzz kind of goes away a little bit. You come back with so many ideas and you know, it's fantastic. So uh, yeah, please do go along, along to those ones. Um, and something else we've, we've sort of, we're trying in Cambridge is recently, I'm sure many of you know about you know, Google sponsors some Raspberry Pis, got those out into schools through organisations like Code Club and all sorts of places. Um, our local CAS Hub, we're given a few of them and we were asked to try and get those out into schools. So one of the things we, we thought was, would be a nice way of doing that, the goal is really to get, to, get them into the hands of pupils, not sat in cupboards in teachers' classrooms not being used. So what we suggested to our local council members was to write us a proposal. Tell us how you're going to use five of these Raspberry Pis with your students. Tell us what activities you want to deliver and how you're going to get them. You know, it could be that you do something with an after school club. You might deliver a, a trial in a lesson. You might use a couple for some prizes. Who knows? You write to us, give us a proposal of how you're going to get these into the hands of kids, get kids using them, and, and we'll consider some of those and we'll get those out. Uh, last year we, we gave out 15 pies to different schools to use in classrooms. We're just in the process of collecting feedback from those. One of the conditions of having some pies from us is that we would like you to write up what it is that you've done with them so that we've got some evidence of, of, of how we can use them and we can pass that on to other people. Uh, but we currently, we just recently got given a, a, a whole batch more from Google. So I, I'm currently, recently in the last few weeks, I had a, another, uh, another few boxes of Raspberry Pis arrived ready to go out to schools. So as I was saying to a few people earlier on that I was talking to in other talks, um, we've got some pies. If you want some pies, if the problem that you have at the moment is you don't have any, and you'd like to do something with them in school, then um, email me, I'll put my contact details back up at the end, write me a different proposal, tell me what you'd like to do, and we'll perhaps get some out to you. Um, and in, that's what you get in the kit, so you get a pie, you get a magpie magazine, a little setup kit, and, and the SD card, pretty much most things you need. The only thing it doesn't contain is the video cable. To connect stuff. Keyboard. Oh, and the keyboard and mouse. But well, yeah, mostly yeah, I mean, the video cable, because you might have to do the, depends on your monitor, but most keyboards will have keyboards and monitors. Um, so yeah, there's some nice starter kits there to get started. Uh, so if you want to get one of those, uh, email me and let me know how you intend to use the uh, pie with some students or how you're going to get it into the hands of students. One thing, um, we're just at the moment, we've just launched a competition with our Key Stage 3 students. Um, where the prize, the, we've got some Raspberry Pis for each year group and the prize they're going to receive for the, for the best computer game they design is, is a Raspberry Pi for them to have at home. Um, yeah, so that's that point. Um, and the last bit is a, is a bit indulgent. I'm here today to talk about cows, but I, I kind of also wanted to tell you a little bit about what I've been doing with Raspberry Pi. And as I say, it's not hugely exciting. It's not massively innovative, but I started back in September 20, oh sorry, back in, in 2012, and I had a Pi. Back when Pi's were gold dust, and you couldn't really get you know, more than one. If you had one, then you know you were in the minority. And I took it into school, and I said, well, hey guys, this is a, this is a Raspberry Pi. And you know, the, the question that uh, we had earlier on, you know, what does it do? And we kind of talked a bit about what it did, and I showed a few kids what it did, and we did a few little basic things, maybe passed it around, did some stuff with a club, but one Pi is not very, you know, it's, much with, with the kids. But then I, remember, I found a few activities on the CAS website and I, I played around with just getting them using Linux. So hooking a little Raspberry Pi up at the front of the room, demonstrating that, having SSH enabled, get the kids logging into it over, over the network, get them listing some files or copying some files or deleting some files, teach them at the end of the lesson how to boot each other off the Pi. Um, and then, and then don't revisit that at all because it just gets chaotic. Send them how to broadcast messages to each other. And then they all started to write up their own little Linux user guides, how to copy files, how to do that. Um, and we, we used, did some network basic, basics through that. We talked about IP addresses and server and all that kind of stuff. And also, um, we used some of the, the great uh, Pi recipe cards produced by Clive Beam, just in, in, uh, in the Raspberry Pi Foundation through OCR. Um, we did things like little flashy LED, singing Jelly Baby, great little activities that you can do. And for a long time, that, that was me, just one pie in school, trying to do little bits and bobs with pupils here and there. Um, we did, we, we've moved on since then, but I'd like to show you um, something else. This is, um, I hang around a lot with the historians at school, and um, they're not here, and they can't hear me, so they're quite geeky, and they're from, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah. um, and, and um, they were sort of seeing what I was doing with Raspberry Pi, and said, well, could we do something with this? We've got our kids out at the moment, and they are, they're doing all these kind of reflections on the Holocaust. 
they are our school are very good at, uh, at um, work on the Holocaust and the kids do some excellent responses to that. But then the six kids, they didn't draw a picture or paint a, you know, a, a painting or write a poem. They composed a piece of music. And the teacher said, well, I really want a way of displaying all the artwork, but having the music as well. And that being a quiet, a quiet, reflective place in our school where kids can go and think about these events. And so you can probably just see in the top right corner there, we've got a Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm deliberately out of the case because I want it to be visible and naked as well. And um, what we've then done on the bottom here is he, he spent ages, ages picking out these buttons. Um, but we've got some little buttons down here in the corner. And he wanted ones that illuminated, like nice sort of lift buttons. And we made something very simple, uh, but all it does is, if I just click on the little video you can see here, um, all it does is you walk up, you press the button, it plays one of the audio tracks. And it's not a complicated idea, but now this is a focal point in our resource centre, our library, where people can come along, pop some headphones on, and they can hear some of the responses from our U11. And we're just in the process of updating it with some more. We might even look at a Pi TFT, but I'm not quite sure how big the video is going to be in that little case. Um, and just trying to really use that as a way of displaying work in school. We thought it was quite a nice idea. And this again was just with one Raspberry Pi. And um, it was at a time when we didn't have any computing students. We had three or four kids who were doing the ICT who really wanted to get on with this. So we sat down and we did, we did the coding together. Kind of thing. So it was a nice little project just to get started on some basic GPIO. And that's going to loop around for ages. Um, let's just move on. Uh, something else we did recently was just with the Raspberry Pi. We, there was a great big like, a, a, a drop down day where some kids were doing some stuff in a hall. <coughs> And they, they had to come along and they had to work together. And they, they, I think they're trying to, I wasn't involved in this bit, they were trying to recreate the cityscape of London using straws and paper and stuff. It was all about teamwork and stuff. And so um, there was a way of capturing it. So we, we slung a Raspberry Pi up in the, in the high corner of the room after spending half an hour on the ladder. Um, and then just captured the whole day, did it back on time, lapse, sped it up, passed it on to pupils. And it was a really feel good factor, really nice way of capturing a whole day's worth of activity in, in 20 seconds or so. And again, it sort of it gave the Raspberry Pi a little bit of exposure within the school. People were aware that we were doing this. Um, we've since we've since moved on from there a little bit, in that we now have um, we now have Pies in, in quite a few of our lessons. Now, one of the things that I think is really important uh, for the student is is, is ownership of, of the Pies because and, and the fact they can take them home. So, what we've encouraged all of our students to do to take the key, the key stage four option is that they are encouraged, they don't, they don't have to, but they're encouraged to purchase a pie. They do it through us, so we, we buy it and they don't pay the VAT and all that kind of thing, so it just makes it a better deal for them. And we can sort of get it in bulk and that kind of thing, so that helps, that helps them out. And because they're bringing their pies in and we spend, so I'm just in the process of doing my next batch for next year, we'll sit down with students, we'll have some after school sessions, we'll learn about how to set them up, we'll set some tasks, we'll talk about some very basic things about using the Raspberry Pi, and then I'm hoping that when I send them home over the summer with their Raspberry Pi, they have a set of challenges. They'll come back in September, and hopefully, at least half of them will have done something with them and be, you know, really fired up for doing some more in the lesson. And it means that when they go home, they've got something to code on, some platform they can use at home. Um, and I found that it's been it's been really powerful them having that, that ha having the Pi, rather than me having the Pi and then getting it out every lesson and me having total control over it. And I mean, it, it does lead to some problems. Uh, we did discover this year that a pie and yogurt do not mix well together. Uh, that tends to frazzle them a little bit. But we've come up with a few solutions and things as well. So um, this was uh, one, one student's Raspberry Pi where the plastic on the edge of the SD card clip popped off. It snapped. So his SD card wasn't being pushed against the contact. I, I said, well, you might have to buy a new one, Seb, I'm afraid. You might have, I don't know. I can't, I've tried fixing it. I'm not very good at soldering. I can't fix that. And then he, he never spoke to me again. And then I, I said, well, um, that happened with your pie. Oh, I fixed it, sir. And he just wasted a 2p in there and he can, it works fine. You know? <laughs> and, you know, a bit of, bit of creative thinking, a bit of problem solving. We've got around most of our problems. I think out of the 36, we've had two students buy new pies uh, or SD cards. One was yogurt and one was a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so next year, I think, you know, we're looking at buying some slightly more robust cases. We want to get the, the, you can get the micro SD adapter so that the card doesn't stick out. Because that was one of the things, they were shoving shove it in their bags, you know, and they were running off for a lesson. And these are the kind of kids, that, you know those kids that turn up to a lesson, every lesson with an exploded pen? Right? <laughs> these are the kind of kids that were walking into the lesson going, oh, my SD card snapped off to it. Um, so we've had a few little problems. 
Um, the, the, the initial first few weeks, you know, did feel a little bit like we were spending more time resolving the technical stuff than we were doing the teaching, but we kind of got there eventually. Uh, Minecraft over VNC, we, we, what, what I didn't show you on the previous screen, uh, what we've got there is we've got two students working on, on one Pi. One of them is connected up via the HDMI VJ lead, and that's the one on the left, and the one on the right is on his Windows PC and he's remoted in over VNC. And that's the way we sort of tend to use it, because we discovered that Minecraft Pi, when we used it anyway, unless it's changed, um, it didn't work at all over VNC, so you needed some live connection. We had the damage we've got some high. Uh, we, you know, we, we ordered some spares, we've got some spare SD cards. But then the biggest obstacle that I found this year was assessment and work submission. How do you get the kids to get the work off the party and to you? How do you give the work to the kids? You know, one of the, you know, those great strategies, give the kids the starter code, let them develop it, let them improve it, let them fix it. But if you can't get it onto their pies easily, if they've got to copy it with a memory stick, it can become quite a faff. Um, one of the ideas I'm toying with for next year is perhaps using GitHub, which how many people are familiar with GitHub? Yeah, um, to perhaps the kids have their own accounts. And meet, you know, if they clone a repository that I've produced, they take the code, put it on a pie, develop it, and then push it back to me and I can comment on it and mark it that way. Um, so yeah, as I say, we've, we've not done a huge amount, but one of the key things that I, I, I'm really pleased with is student ownership. I think getting the pies into the hands of the kids is, is one of the most important things. Um, and just, just to sort of finish off quickly, we've, um, we've since then we managed to get a bit of funding from our um, from some of governors and businesses and that kind of thing. We've, we've, we've managed to purchase some, uh, a, a set of kits for Key Stage 3. So we now have these kits for Key Stage 3, we're currently trialling these. Uh, we've got a, a wireless access point, um, <clears throat> 16 pies in boxes like this. So you've got the keyboards, you've got the mice, you've got some pie cams, you've got uh, USB cables, you don't need to faff around with um, anything because we've got all the cables and the, like, the monitor in the room already. You just plug the Pi in, plug the keyboard in, off you go. <coughs> and they're great for things like Sonic Pi, uh, we're using that with the Year 9 at the minute. Coda, uh, I've, got, I've got a class of Year X, I love Encoder. And general <coughs> Python, uh, GPIO, and Pi can work as well. So, yeah, <coughs> that's kind of where I'm up to at the moment. Um, so, in summary, just to sort of wrap up everything I've just sort of waffled on about for the past whatever time it is. Um, <clears throat> join CAS, if you haven't already, join CAS. Um, great, and it's free, I should have said that already if you haven't already. Uh, join CAS is free, lots of great resources, and the community is a really active and vibrant one, lots of uh, conversations, resources, and all kinds of things on there. And the website's there. Um, <clears throat> attend your local hub, okay? I don't know how many of you Cambridge is your local hub, but if it is, please come along. I'll publish some dates uh, shortly and you can come along to the Cambridge hub. Um, suggest and attend some local CPD. Uh, attend the National Conference. Um, there's lots you can do with just a single Raspberry Pi. You don't have to have a Pi for per, per pupil to get them doing stuff with it, or, to, or for it to be a, a talking point, a discussion point, a way of engaging the students. Uh, start small. Um, I, I leapt in with both feet last year and just said, right, well, we'll buy 40 pies and some cables. And we kind of waddle along through, we've, we've kind of got there now, but you, know, you, don't have to, you, know, you don't have to go in that level. You can start small and, and take smaller steps. And, and things will break and you just kind of have to get used to it occasionally and just be prepared for that. You know, and, and you know, maybe so we talk about our strategy of, of sabotage, you know, what's wrong with this, and who sabotage, and you get them to be your troubleshooters. Because when they go home with it, they're going to have to do that themselves anyway, so they may as well learn how to in school. Um, and, I, and I think, oh, and student ownership yeah, is really important. And that's it, really. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Um, we're, well, we're in Cambridgeshire, but we're part of Darren's Peterborough Hub. Right. So, you know the thing you said about you've got the Pi Bank and yeah. we can put the post to you. Is that only for people in your hub, or can we? I don't see why not. I don't, I don't, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, it, it depends how many people I get asking for pies, I guess. So, yeah, I think we'll, we'll take it on the strength of what we want to do, what we want, you know, what we want to do with them, and, and how prepared you are. I think what's really important is we, we definitely want to get some write-up of what you've done, some kind of idea, something we can pass on to somebody else and say, look what this school's done. Try so I, work, I work in a special needs school, so mm -hmm. not ne necessarily what I'm going to be doing is not, ma not necessarily going to be that fantastic compared to obviously like other secondary schools because they're like designing their own games and things like that. My kids are kind of working at a much lower level than that. 
That's still fantastic. Absolutely. And, and we you know, still need resources that can be yeah. used to support all children of all ability and all backgrounds. And all, you know, so, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, drop me an email and, and we'll, we'll can do. Cool. Yeah. Would you receive applications from an independent school? Um, I guess so. Yes. I don't, I don't, I don't see why not. Yeah. If the state schools can subsidise the independent schools, can't they? As <laughs> <laughs> independent schools do state schools. <laughs> Sorry, that was a mean job. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think that our priority is, is supporting local schools and, and getting the pies out into hands of kids. So we we'll would certainly consider. You need, you need surprisingly little bit of kids to make it work. And mm -hmm. when you, if you call something in your school, whatever you, whether you're a special independent college, and then say to parents, if you can give us twenty pounds or something, that and you'll, there'll be an employer there or a business who will say, look, we'll, 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 if you put our name or mention us or whatever, we'll put two hundred in. That's that's how we've done a lot of this. Yeah, we we'll give us the, the kits we put together for Key Stage Three. I think we we paid about twelve hundred for those, like sixteen raspberry pies with all the accessories, everything we need to get started. Now that's that's not it's not a small sum, but it's not an insurmountable sum. And you know we've got kids that have suggested doing bits of fundraising themselves in school or around school. Uh, and with the student ownership thing, we found when we asked parents, we said you do not have to. It's absolutely fine. We will provide though if we know we will have some in school. You can borrow. You just can't take them home. Every parent said yeah. And and in fact this year because we're providing a slightly nicer case and a couple more accessories. Last year we didn't provide a video cable, so they had to go out and buy them themselves. This year we've got the price, and still parents have said, yes please. And some parents have said, actually, can we get two? Because what, what, you know, their dad wants one, their sibling wants one. <laughs> so, um, we've found ourselves as distributors of raspberry pies. You could have bought three iPads with the same amount of money. Mm. Three only. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, exactly. Yeah, cool. Any more questions before we go on to our final session? Super. Thank you very much. Thank you.